In this video, three major construction projects currently in progress in different parts of the city centre. Two very large holes in the ground, a prison that could become a luxury residential project, a poem, a movie recommendation and where does the name Renica come from? Here's my theory. This is the first of three big construction sites we're going to take a look at in this update of Aiden Eyewitness. This is Contour, Contour 1. There are going to be two towers, uh, Contour 1 and Contour 2. And uh, this is how it looks. It's right in front of the Deansgate Square towers. And we can see it's got beveled edges. So let's take a closer look. Contour, now launched. That's a nice nighttime visualization. Contour 1 on the right, Deansgate Square South Tower on the left. Moving up the building, the beveled edge goes in and out in a similar way to the proposed Viaducts 2 by the same architects, Simpson Hoare. The viewpoint is similar to the one from Hume Footbridge, which I crossed to get here. That's Great Jackson Street curving off to the left. There's another view of Contour 1. What's that building behind? It's River Street Tower by the same architect. It's a student residence next to the Mancunian Way. What's this? The green, a golf simulator. All amenities and entertainment taken care of, it seems. So you hardly need to leave the district. Well, I'm not sure about that. Refined luxury living, Urban Tales Dog Spa. But how pet friendly are these apartments? The contour insignia is a jagged line, recalling the beveled edge. Danger, deep excavations, yes, they're digging a massive hole for the foundations of the neighbouring tower. We'll be seeing another massive hole on a different project later in the video. This is a long construction site that follows the curve of the street. In the distance is Vista River Gardens next to the Irwell, also built and developed by Renacre. So who are Renacre? Founded by Darren Whitaker in 2006, Darren with one R, Whitaker with one T, they're one of Manchester's most high-profile property developers, focusing on brownfield renovation sites. They're based in Ancoats, but the name can be seen on sites all over the city centre. So it looks like the company name is a portmanteau of part of the founder's first and second name, so that would be Renica. New Jackson, Manchester, a world-class skyscraper district. Danger, children must not play on this site. Well, I would have liked to have played here. Slamming the pile driver into the ground, swinging the crane around like a fairground ride. Sounds like great fun to me. Over one acre of green space, contour one and two, with their distinctive grooved pillars. South tower in between. The randomly shaded glass panes are a signature of this architect. New Jackson Park, smoke free. Seems like they're one step ahead here. A nice dusk aerial view there. It's good that they've provided plenty of great visualisations. Elizabeth Tower on the left. Beetham 360 cylinder and the two contours. A mini Manhattan close to the heart of Manchester. They've left a gap so there's still a view south from the Beetham. A neighbourhood like no other. Well, that's true, and hopefully it will be for the right reasons. This is another view from just south across the Mancunian Way similar to the Dusk drone shots featured in previous videos, and looking southeast from Castlefield. By the way, the drone is in the hangar undergoing scheduled maintenance, but hopefully she will be flying again soon. This is the open area in front of Elizabeth Blade and 360, and we're standing on Crown Street. On the map we can see the name of the building is Crown Street Victoria Residence, part of New Jackson. But where is the Manchester-style Crown Street street sign? I can't find one. Not even the sketchy map has the name Crown Street on it. This area was once a maze of narrow streets, industrial buildings and slums. Then in later years, it became an area of empty sites used as car parks. How things have changed. We'll cycle from Crown Street onto Chester Road, the A56, heading towards Deansgate. That's Stay City Apartments, which I've featured previously. On Deansgate, there are new cycle lanes, and we ride around to Central Street. There's our next project, St. Michael's, now seen from Bootle Street. They've been cleaning up the former police station facade with new construction behind, and the facade looks stunning. Amazing, this facade was to have been destroyed in the original plans, but they changed their minds after public pressure. 
we see the contrast between the geometric patterns in gold and the white stone on the facade on South Mill Street, completed in 1937, now a monument to the police. St. Michael is the patron saint of police officers, as well as the chief of the angels and archangels. From the corner of Jackson's Row, let's flash back to last year, two years ago, and nine years ago. On Jackson's Row, 1930s neoclassical meets 2020s geometrical. Interesting to see the name Jackson again. Who was he? Probably an 18th century local landowner. On the boards, a visualization of this very ambitious project with multiple levels, terraces, a flight of steps high above street level, a prime upmarket destination. The Reform Synagogue has gone, so this place will be reserved for the worship of Mammon, link below. You could say that's the nighttime economy of Manchester. Love it, it says. Do you? Live it. But can you afford to? Relentless Solboy Domus, three dominant names on Manchester's property scene. There's the massive hole in the ground to accommodate the foundation of the tower, which has yet to rise above ground level. Jerusalem Place, another religious reference. To quote William Blake's poem and song, I will not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand till we have built a 400 million pound, 180,000 square foot sustainable mixed use luxury high rise scheme in England's green and pleasant land. There's the Sir Ralph Abercrombie, spelt with a Y at the end. The historic pub was also to have been demolished in the original plans, but thank goodness it's here to stay. Construction workers are on an access platform installing windows halfway up the facade. The upper floors look largely completed. This is the smaller of the two structures. Phase 1 is expected to complete in 2024. The tall tower, Phase 2, will open in a few years. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was Manchester. And there's another view of the hole, with those huge red supports, which I think are to stop the walls from collapsing. The Manchester Evening News reports that Domis excavated the site where the 41-storey tower will stand, and they've dug out 50,000 tonnes of material, equivalent in weight, to 4,167 12-tonne double-decker buses link to the article below. And lest we forget, let's take a quick look at a couple of my old photographs from this viewpoint on Bootle Street. Ah yes, it reminds me of the police thriller Hell is a City, starring Stanley Baker as Inspector Martineau. A violent criminal escapes over the walls of strange ways to terrorise the city. One of my favourite films set in Manchester. From Bootle Street we join Deansgate along the cycle lanes past Manchester Cathedral, and we are at the back of the AO Arena, opposite Yusen, on the Inner Ring Road. And this is our third project, and it's big, very big, extending a long way back on this sloping site where Buddington's Brewery once stood. This is Waterhouse Gardens, a huge development of mostly apartments, named after Alfred Waterhouse, architect of the town hall. The visualisations feature mostly the interiors, but... Here are a few of the exteriors. I wish they could make a more realistic style of visualisation from multiple angles in different weather conditions to show how it will really look when built. It's a mixed-use development with 556 apartments, duplexes and penthouses with a private clubhouse offering premium amenities to residents. The buildings will be covered in red brick, or more exactly, masonry veneer. That's a thin layer of real brick made off-site and applied onto the exterior. We can see some masonry veneer here. The architectural shapes and use of brick are said to be inspired by the Victorian Gothic Revival style and especially the architectural style of the brewery itself, which was designed by Alfred Waterhouse. I wonder what he'd think of these designs. These views are from the upper side along Dutton Street. Through the site we can see nice views over the landscape. This is the older face of the district, a grid pattern of streets with old industrial units. And this is the future. Waterhouse Gardens occupies a long rectangular site, and at the top end is a relic of the past, HMP Manchester, commonly known as Strangeways Prison, opened in 1868, also designed by Alfred Waterhouse. Is it right to have a residential location so close to a prison? 
Well, actually, I've read that the councils of both Manchester and Salford would like the prison to be decommissioned and its inmates moved to a new facility, but that decision lies with the Ministry of Justice in London. We know prisons are overcrowded. I saw a TV documentary about this prison a few years ago. I found it shocking. And I remember the riots of 1989 with prisoners on the roof. In 2024, this area is undergoing redevelopment. The prison could become a luxury residential development. It's been done in other cities. In Liverpool, the Bridewell prison became student accommodation and in Portsmouth, HMP Kingston was converted into luxury apartments. Can you imagine strange ways being redeveloped in a similar way? Would you want to live there? Or maybe it could be turned into a museum and educational centre like Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia. I found that fascinating. In Hell is a City, there's a rooftop showdown with Inspector Martineau and it doesn't end well. To see how Manchester once looked, you have to watch this movie. So here's Waterhouse Gardens from the west side. It's an incredible transformation from what was there before and it won't be long before we can walk through the project from one end to the other. So that's it, Saturday the 31st of August 2024, a snapshot of progress on three major construction projects captured for posterity, so please keep watching Aidan Eyewitness. Please like, subscribe, share and comment respectfully please, and if you can buy me a coffee, that would be great. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Manchester. <laughs>